Hey what's up everybody it's Dallas with Gadget Hacks and today I'm going to show you how to root almost any variant of the Galaxy S6 or S6 Edge without tripping Knox. Now both the Galaxy S6 as well as the S6 Edge have had root methods available to them since the devices were first released. But these existing root methods would trip the Knox counter on your device. To give you a bit of background, Knox is a security platform for Samsung devices that makes sure that no modifications have been made to the system partition and thus no potential security vulnerabilities have been created by the user. In general, as soon as any system level changes are detected by Knox, a hardware fuse is tripped. This fuse cannot be reset, so once it's been tripped, there's no turning back. This is why a tripped Knox counter means your warranty is void, since there's no way of covering up the fact that you've modified your software. It also likely means that you won't be able to use Samsung Pay whenever that comes out, since it'll probably call on Knox to make sure that the initial security methods implemented by Samsung are still in place. So basically, you don't want to trip Knox if you can avoid it. Well, thanks to a new root utility from developer Idler1984, almost all variants of the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge can now be rooted without tripping the Knox counter. And yes, that even includes the Verizon and AT&T models, whose locked bootloaders have prevented other root methods from working. But as a heads up, this method utilizes a kernel exploit, which means the loophole that it's using to root your device will probably be closed soon. For instance, with the Galaxy S5, a similar root method called Towel Root came out, and within a month it was blocked entirely. So if you want to root your AT&T or Verizon device, the time is now. And if you want to root without tripping Knox, this is likely your one and only opportunity. If you're watching this video in July or August, this method probably doesn't work anymore. But right now in May 2015, rooting the Galaxy S6 is about as easy as it gets. One drawback here is that once you're rooted, you won't be able to accept over-the-air updates. But manually updating is still possible without tripping the Knox counter. You just need to download the newer stock firmware and sideload it with Odin. And if you want to stay rooted after updating with Odin, you'll have to wait until a pre-rooted build of the stock firmware is published on XDA or the like. But if you're ready to get rooted now, the first thing you'll need to do is figure out what firmware build number your phone is currently running. So head to Settings, then About Device, and find the build number entry. From here you're looking for the sequence of letters and numbers that follows this first period. So for mine you can see that it's G925T followed by some extra letters. Well jot that number down, then use it to verify that your phone is supported by ping pong root. Like I said, most variants of the S6 and S6 Edge are supported, but there are a few random ones here and there that aren't. So with that bill number handy, just head to my full tutorial on Gadget Hacks, where you'll find the full list of supported firmware versions. Then once you've found your bill number in that list and you're sure your device is supported, the next thing you'll need to do is enable unknown sources. So head back to your phone's main settings menu, but this time, go to lock screen and security. From here, make sure that the unknown sources option is enabled. Then you're ready to move on. So next up, you'll need to grab a copy of Ping Pong Root itself. This is another thing that I have linked out at the full tutorial, so head over there to download the APK installer file. Then when you have the file saved to your device, tap the Download Complete notification to launch it. At this point, Android's installer interface should come right up, so tap Install on this screen. Now you may see a message about this app containing code that bypasses Android's security protections. That's exactly how this root tool works, so it's nothing to worry about. Just tick the box next to I understand if you see this message, then press install anyway. When that's finished, tap open, then give it a few seconds and you should see the installer interface come up again. This time it's asking you to install SuperSU, which is an awesome root management app from developer Chainfire. So press install on this screen, and when that's finished, tap done. Now support for some newer firmwares has been added since Ping Pong Root was first released, so the root script for these devices isn't baked into the app just yet. If yours is one of those devices, it will be clearly labeled as such in the list of supported firmware versions. And if that's the case, you'll have to hit this Download Data button and let it run for a few seconds before you begin. But most people can skip this step. So when you're ready to root your phone, tap the Get Root button at the top of the screen. At this point, you'll see a message telling you to please wait. While this message is showing, don't interact with your phone at all. Just leave it alone and let it do its thing. After about 30 seconds of that, you should get a confirmation dialog telling you that the root process has been completed. It also recommends that you reboot your device as soon as possible, so take care of that now. 
When you get back up, go ahead and open the Super SU app that you'll now find in your app drawer. From here, the app will inform you that your super user binaries need to be updated, so tap continue here. Next, it'll ask how you would like to update your binaries. Choose normal as the method. Much like the initial routing process, this part should take about 30 seconds, so just sit tight. When it's done, you'll be prompted to reboot your phone one more time, so tap reboot on this pop-up to take care of that. So after rebooting that second time, you're fully rooted and ready to go. The Knox counter will still be untripped, and you'll be able to give super user access to any app of your choosing. To verify that everything went off without a hitch, I'd recommend that you download an app called Root Checker. It was created by developer Joey Krim, and it's available on the Google Play Store for free. So search it by name to get it installed, then I'll show you how to verify that you're rooted. First up, Root Checker will give you a pair of disclaimers. Tap Agree, and then OK on each of these. From here, just tap this Verify Root button to begin. At this point, Root Checker will ask for super user access, so tap Grant on the pop-up. Within a second or two, Root Checker should inform you that your device is properly rooted, so you'll know you're good to go. And now that you're rooted, you'll have access to lots of cool mods that can change almost anything about your device. I've already covered several such mods, so be sure to check out GadgetHacks.com for lots of cool root tips and tricks. And as always, we'd appreciate it if you would like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel. So we'll see you again next time, folks, but until then, happy gadget hacking!